in for VintageRock.com at damn 2014. And I'm with an old buddy of mine. Well, not that old, anyway. Well, I'm a vintage buddy. He is vintage, absolutely. Uh, this is J-Lo, James Lomenzo, bassist extraordinaire. And we're at the Ashdown booth. Um, ah, ah, down. down. Exactly. <laughs> now, dude, tell us about your your stuff that you've got going on with Ashdown. Look at, you've got things with your name on it, too, man. Yeah, I've got stuff all over here. Okay, 20, um, no, excuse me. For me, it's about 10, 12 years with Ashdown. Um, when I was playing with David Lee Roth back in the old days, not that old, but in the early 2000s, I needed an amp rig. So I was trying to figure out what to get, and so I put on the DVD where John Entwistle was playing that, you know, that last great live DVD, and I was astounded by his sound, and I said, what the hell is he playing through? And I saw these big logos there, and I said, I'll have, you know, like the guy at the bar, I'll have whatever he's having. So I immediately beelined to these guys, and I said, what do you got? They said, we got this, that, and the other thing. So I bought a bunch of the amps. They didn't give them to me, you know, and I'm in love with these amps because they allow J-Lo to sound like he wants to sound each and every time, year after year. Now, is that a consistent sound, or is it something that you want to sound different in each and every place that you play? No, here's the thing. The, the cool thing about these amps is they have a, a great bridge between a vintage classic rock sound where you can kind of wind them up and get that little bit of grind that we like. And you can have a modern sound along with that. And on some of these amplifiers, they have a little control here where you can blend how much tube grind and all that is in it. And so, I mean, you can have a lot of variety of sound, but basically for what I like to hear and play, it gives me the best of both worlds. It gives me the new sound and it gives me the kind of that old thing that I'm looking for. Now the exact rig that you use and say on stage, is that would be the same thing that you would use in a recording studio or? Well, oddly enough, and you really don't have to do this, kids, you know, but I, yeah, I drag it all in there. I use, I use these ABMs, uh, they have all kinds of flavors of them, and uh, they always have the same EQ section. And the cool thing about them is they, they've, they've got a traditional um, EQ, and then they've got these little embellished ones. Right. My curve looks something like that because I'm going deaf. <laughs> so that's pretty much what we have to go to 14. Yeah, I, go, I push them all the way up to 14. Up to 14. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so these are great. Um, I use a, uh, eight to, this is an A10 box that I've been using since my days in David Lee Roth and Black Label. As a matter of fact, um, you might have seen me topple a bunch of these over in England. And yeah, with Black Label, I would imagine you toppled over quite a few things. Yeah, no, it was, it was by design. And let me tell you, kids, they can take it, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, how many watts are we talking about? How many, how many watts are you huh? blasting what? out? What? How many watts are you blasting out? Well, they're, they are a nice color, I agree. <laughs> Enough to make your buddy James deaf. Um, yeah, we, I, I've always used a minimum of, um, of 1,000 watts per box, okay? And I, that's perfect for me. So uh, back in the Black Label days when I had four of these 810s and two double 15s cranking away, I think we had a mighty 3,000 watts all full tilt. And it sounds silly, but it just sounded glorious. Oh my God, yeah, 3,000. Yeah, no, it's transistor watts. It's a big thing. I mean, anybody who knows about equipment, I think I'm talking to a few here, um, there's a big difference between tube wattage and transistor wattage. So uh, transistors, you need to have that headroom built in the amp. With tubes, you can kind of push them, and then they'll go to their limit, and they'll compress, which is a great sound. Right. And it's something I usually emulate with a limiter on the back end, so it has the same effect that power tubes do. Tell us a little bit about this board that you've got over this little pedal thing that we've got here. little pedal thing, okay. So The pedal thing is officially called... The, uh, it's not in any particular order, but it's the James Lomenzo, ah, James Lomenzo uh, Ashdown Bass Hyperdrive, named by me. I actually figured out this whole design on a plane and wrote it on a napkin and gave it to them. And it came the way, I thought it was gonna be like Spinal Tap, like it'd be too small, yeah, too right. big, but it came out perfectly. Um, the idea came from trying to get the kind of sound that I used to have back in the 70s. I had an Alembic bass, which had a stereo output and um, I used to use the back pickup through an old Mesa boogie amp and use that as just a guitar distortion. The front pickup was more of a, I used to call it like a church organ sound. Just big, wide, low frequency bass through like an 18 inch speaker with a crown amplifier, so it had a lot of headroom. And so I was trying to figure out, how can I do that, how can I play gigs now and just kind of put something in a bag and stick it in any, any amp in the world and get that effect? And so I came up with this. And just uh, without getting too techy on it, what it basically does is there's a sweepable mid-range right there, which goes from 200 to 2K, which is the attack zone of all bass guitars. Right. And uh, there's a Q switch, which can really narrow it down and make the thing sound like a wah-wah. The, the usefulness of that is to actually put it, push that Q switch in and hear the actual focus of the frequency that you want to use on your bass. Right. All basses speak in a different range. Some have higher tones, some have lower tones. You can accentuate that. Now, the real trick is after that, it goes into a distortion FET, and then you decide how much of that breakup is gonna be right there. So you can get all kinds of sounds out of this box. Uh, the third thing is that you can actually 
mix that distorted sound with this mix control. And a traditional distortion is just all distortion. Uh, big muff, all those, right? right? Great sounds, by the way. Uh, this one allows you to get the distortion you want and then mix back the bass sound, which is getting back to that initial premise. Cover right. all the bases. Yeah, all the bases as it were. So, anyway, I've actually been using this for the past three years since we developed it on stage. I put it in my bag wherever I go, just in case I get into any trouble. I can always get the right sound out of this thing. I always know it's yours. It's got your name on it. Well, that's how I can find it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have wristbands with my name on it, too. This way, if I drop dead on stage, I can go, Oh, it's Lomenzo. Come on, let's help him out. Again. <laughs> now, what's something like that retail for? You got any you idea? You know what? I think it, it goes for a, I, I, don't quote me on this, but I think it's about a buck 20. It's which nothing. You take, you feel the weight. Yeah, it's feel nothing. Weight. It's nothing. Right? You get into an argument with your guitar player, you can yeah, you throw it at the drummer like right. everybody else. Does. No, I don't throw anything at the drummer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anymore. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> They throw back, and they, they have, have, they have to, weapons. They exactly. have more stuff to throw. <laughs> That'll hurt a lot more. Um, dude, playing-wise, you went out on the road with John Fogarty. How did all that come about? That was recent. Well, that was crazy. I, I started this little jam uh, jam night on Monday nights in Toluca Lake uh, at a friend of mine's uh, bar called Lucy's, Lucy's 51. 51. Yeah, and it's a great little hang, uh, great food and all that. But anyway, my friend goes, you know, I'm trying to promote a dead night. What about if you bring some of your big shot friends down and jam? And I thought, that's wonderful, because we're all available on Mondays. Like, we gig on the weekends. We're either on tour or we're just doing weekend gigs. So I thought, this could actually be very cool. And I was looking for a place just to do, like, the old school thing where everybody just kind of gets in there, you see what kind of mix of musicians you have, and get them together and see what comes up. I had no idea it would take off the way it did. By week two, once the word got out, the place was just filthy with musicians, celebrities, everything, because it's... It's a small little, it's an unassuming little place. The stage really isn't built for bands, but we cram everybody on there. And you know, the spirit of the thing, I try to enforce the spirit where there really isn't a lot of like sitting there in judgment of who's gonna be the best. Check your ego at the door. Yeah, pretty much. And even that's not a rule. You know, if you happen right. to walk in with your ego, well then justify it, you know, it's that kind of thing. And I don't mind that either, that's great. But um, what's happened is that we've gotten local people there who are really good and talented up with these people who are famous and have been doing this for, you know, 30 years plus. And it's been a great night consistently. So um, that's what I was doing. So when you're getting to the point of your question, uh, John Fogarty, uh, Kenny Aronoff was gracious enough to take this challenge and do this thing with me. I asked, I asked him to do it. Actually, Brian Tissue was originally going to do it, and then he went on tour with Greensreich. So I said, who can I call? And, I, and Kenny's a great friend of mine. And so I called him up, and I, I kind of like, you really want to do this Monday night thing? There's not a lot of money. It's just for love. And he was like, I'm there. And he loves it, because, you know, we just play flat out. Anyway, he's played with John Fogarty for 20 years. And one week he comes to me and announces, John came to me today and he said, uh, I'm shaking things up. Uh, I think we're going to get it, you know, replace some band guys and just do something fresh. So naturally, the first thought in my mind was, I would love to do that. And I, I said that. And he said, well, you know, it's a whole nother thing. And he goes, I would definitely recommend you because I think you're good enough. But I think they have different ideas about who they want to have. And I said, respect it. Great. Thank you. So a week into it, Kenny comes back and goes, we just auditioned five guys and they were all really great but he liked the guy that was most like you. So I told him, if you like the guy that's most like James, yeah. you should try James. So he put me in the next round of auditions and it was great, time of my life. So there I am. How long did you go out for, with him for? Um, we did um, a month this summer and did the States. We went straight across from LA. We started at the, uh, at the Nokia, went up north, uh, went down south, uh, I think through Texas, uh, middle states, eastern seaboard down to Florida, ended in New York and back again we went and it was dude it was a whirlwind it was great he's as great as ever if not better in some ways plans to do it again in the future we're going to new york next week uh, awesome awesome playing howard stern's, hometown howard stern's birthday party but we're also playing in long island uh, um i i forgot exactly where but you know um they're gonna put you in like sometime after gary the retard from the from the from the howard stern show or? hopefully hopefully before <laughs> Hopefully be Actually, I think I think I think John actually has to play with Gary the Retard on his on his shoulders, which I know he can do. <laughs> Howard's 60 this year, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Unreal, man. Gotta, Still at it. I, I got to tell you. So we're excited to do that, and we got a few shows, and we got stuff coming up in Europe this summer, and there's a whole bunch of spatterings of things that are grouping as we go. So it's an exciting gig for me. I love you know I love playing with him. He's just he's an amazing musician and just a really great man. Are you recording at all or anything like that? Uh, that's on the horizon. I think he's building a studio right now. So I think once it's done, then it's time to make music in it. You can find him on Monday nights at Lucy's 51 in Toluca Lake, along with a whole bunch of other people. 
sitting in and rocking, myself included one of these days. Yeah, I'm going to come back. down this Monday. He and I have been talking about jamming first. together for a while. Yeah. drums this Monday. Yeah, this Monday night. We'll come down and I'll rock, you know? And you will too. Dude, much success on the Ashdown uh, pedal board and everything else you guys it's got going been, on? It's been out for three years and it's been a really good seller. So I thank you for that. And you know what? It's really good. It's not, I'm not, I want to make money. So buying my thing with my name on it, it's really good. So. Always good to see you, my friend. You too, Jordan. Always Thank a blast. So Again, Junkman here from uh, VintageRock.com at uh, NAMM 2014 at the Ashtown booth. We'll talk soon. Yes, James Lomenzo.